Peace, peace, peace. This is your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? So, I got my glasses on. Don't worry, everybody. I am focused on driving. I'm not even looking at the screen, man. Because I'm very close to being where I'm at. So, let's get it started, right? Gratitude exercise. What are you grateful for? Um, I am grateful for... Name three things you're grateful for. So, I'm grateful for... My wife is in kids as usual. Um, I'm grateful for uh, a roof over my head. I am grateful for, I got to give a shout out to this. I looked at my analytics um, on YouTube the other day. Actually, last night, I was up to like one o'clock in the morning and realized that I had a lot of people from around the world watching my videos. So I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for the people in the United States that are rocking with me. I'm grateful for the people in Great Britain, Kenya, uh, East Africa, uh, Jamaica, Trinidad, uh, Haiti. I don't see you on there, man. What's, what's good? Y'all don't love me? Sac passe. Mon cher. Okay. So um, I want to talk about uh, how I owned Duck E. Cheese. I owned... Chuck E. Cheese, man. Let me let me explain something to you. Whenever you say I whenever you say that I don't own this company, I don't have to go hard for this company. This ain't my company. You lost, my friend. You lost. What up, Zone? Zone White in the building. So whenever you say this ain't my company. I don't own this company. You own this company. You lost. You lost. You have to treat whatever company you're working for. If you're working with a company, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to go hard in the paint and win, win, win no matter what, whatever company you're working for, you got to go hard all the time. Meaning, when I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, what up, brother? When I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, right, boom, I treated Chuck E. Cheese like I owned the joint. I literally act like I owned the place. I was 20 years old. You know, I was a cashier. Brother, I went, I was a cashier. I was, um, I, I jumped in the mascot suit, you know. Um, I did birthday parties. I worked the video games. I did everything as if I own that Chuck E. Cheese. Now, a lot of people were saying to me, yo, why are you going so hard? Why are you going so hard for Chuck E. Cheese, man? They don't care about you. What up, Edgar? Why are you going so hard for Chuck E. Cheese, man? They, they, they pay you minimum wage. I was like, it ain't about them. It's about me. It's about me developing a strong work ethic and, and being able to see what I'm made of, see what kind of potential I got to do bro i was i was down on my knees scrubbing grout you know what i'm saying um i did everything in my power i used to wake up before everybody and get there when the managers are there i used to leave when the managers left that's how hard i went to work at chuck e cheese you know what i mean i did everything in my power to win in chuck e cheese i treated that company like it was mine you understand? So I didn't say, hey, this ain't my company. Uh, you know, I'm not getting paid a lot. Once I did that, I psych you. You will literally psych yourself out. Right. And start to scale back and not perform to your fullest ability. So I'll give you an example. Of what happened, man? Um, the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese. What up, Lawrence? Shams, what's good? So. The CEO of Chuck E. Cheese was scheduled to come to our location. I worked at Chuck E. Cheese in Chicago. Um, where was this? Where was this? Uh, on Fullerton. A lot of people in Chicago know about that one. I worked at Chuck E. Cheese in, uh, on Fullerton in Chicago. The CEO was scheduled to come down. The, the, um, the manager was frantic. She was scared to death. She was like, man, we got to get everything in tip-top shape. I need you guys to 
scrub the grout. I need you guys to clean all the machines. I need you guys to do everything. I mean, dude, we, we was doing some grunt work. Me and my boy Shanty, we got it popping. We did whatever it took to make sure that our store was in tip-top shape, right? Because we assumed ownership. We felt that that store is us. That store represented us. If this store does good, we do good, right? If there's a promotion that comes up, we're going to be the first in line because we've assumed ownership of this store. Now, some of you guys might think, oh, man, that's some clown shit. Y'all niggas got, you know, um, you know, bamboozled, hoodwinked. No, 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 no. That's that. That wasn't the case. It, for you to develop a strong work ethic to put 150 percent of whatever you want to do in life, you have to treat, you have to be that way in all areas of your life. Not just work, not just family, not just playtime, everything. You have to put 150% into everything you do. That's how you develop a, a, a killer work ethic. So boom. So when the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese, I forgot his uh, last name, his first name was Dick, right? He was a dick. But because I've already assumed ownership of that store, I felt it was my duty to introduce myself. Now, I'm 20 years old, about to meet a multimillionaire guy who owned, who, who oversaw all of the Chuck E. Cheese. Now, mind you, my manager, my general manager told me not to talk to any of them. Just stay in my place, fall back. But because of my tenacity and my work ethic, I was like, hey, look, dude, my name is Velar Toledo. You know, I work at this Chuck E. Cheese. I really like what you're doing with the place. We we did a lot for you guys. Because I, I didn't even know what a CEO was. I didn't even know what a CEO stood for. But come to find out, fast forward, I had the CEO, before he left, he gave me his cell phone number. I had the cell phone number of the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese. The manager and the general managers didn't he even have that, fam. You feel me? The general managers that have been there for years didn't even have that. I was calling this dude on his cell phone. He was plugging me in and say, hey, man, we're, we're going to be doing a commercial. You want to go there? Cool. Everybody had to, to fall back. Next thing I know, I'm getting all these awards, the employee of the month. Hey, do you want to be assistant manager? Hey, we got some general manager positions available. All because I took ownership of that. And I did that in every single job I've ever had. It wasn't that they were signing my checks, right? It was that I felt that I was an entrepreneur and how would I run this place like my own business? How would I, how would I get down? How would I, how would I implement systems to, if this business was my name on there, whether it's Ballet Total Fitness, whether it's, uh, Energy Savers, whether it's, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, I treated every business I worked for as if it was my own. And then when it was time for me to start my own business, it came naturally. It came naturally. It, it became very easy for me to be able to put in more than 40, 60, 80, 100 hours a week into doing that because I've already practiced. I already rehearsed. I already did everything that I was supposed to do to be able to run my own business. What up, Kelvin? So how I own Chuck E. Cheese has transcended into every other business that I've been involved in. Now I have other businesses reaching out to me saying, Hey, I want you to be a part of my team. What can I do to get you to part of my team? Cause they see how I get down with everybody else's, whatever business I touch is going to be successful hands down. And the reason why I want to make these videos is because sales save my life. You understand what I'm saying? Sales save my life. When when I was out here, I came from New York to Chicago with $150 in my pocket, a boom box, and one suitcase on a Greyhound. That's all I had. $150, a boom box, and a brown suitcase 
with the little belongings that I had. Today, I, I'm gravy. And I want to share this with you guys so you guys can outperform. Stop saying that this ain't my business. It is your business. You're the entrepreneur. Treat every company that you work for as if it's your own. Stand out from, it was easy too because everybody was slacking. Everybody was like, ah, well, this ain't my business. I ain't, I'm not going to do this shit. And it was easy for me to just step right in and outperform everybody else and stand out on my own. So think about that, man. Do you want to be average and mediocre? Do you? Do you want an average life doing average shit? Mediocre shit? Or do you want an extraordinary life and, and, and be glad that you woke up every morning and, and, and dread that you have to go to sleep because you're missing out on so much other stuff? Rock and roll, man. You already know what it is. It's your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. Um, definitely, if you'd like this video, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, we have, I have a lot more videos, a lot more content on there. Go to Gullyware Studios and you'll be able to access a lot of those. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications so you can, uh, get some, uh, YouTube emails about my newest videos. If you have any sales questions, feel free to drop me a comment. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. I might make a video answering them to you. Um, and if you need to reach me, it's 312-799, I'm sorry, 312-999-8117. That's 312-999-8117. I'm here to make sure that you guys succeed and, and, and shine at the highest caliber, my friend. What up, Josh Sheeney? Peace and love and happiness to all you guys. One.